The Victoria Tunnel is a subterranean wagonway uh, that runs throughout Newcastle upon Tyne. This starts up on the town moor and travels through the whole centre of the city of Newcastle and ends up at the actual Ouseburn. This was built between 1839 and 1842 and its whole purpose was to transport coal from the Lees' main colliery down to the banks of the River Tyne uh, where it could be loaded onto ships. In 1860 the pit closed and the equipment was sold and the tunnel was mostly forgotten about. In 1939 with the sort of outbreak of the Second World War there was sort of a need for large scale air raid shelters in Newcastle and of course this tunnel is remembered as a sort of uh, ad hoc solution or a quick solution they could provide. So this means several new entrances were built into the tunnel and in 2006 some funding was actually gathered to convert the lower part of the Ouseburn tunnel into a tourist attraction which you can actually access to this day. The, the purpose of this video is to do a, a sort of a walk along the route of the Ouseburn tunnel and sort of show the landscape it travels through the whole city. So the Lees' main colliery was actually located near Hunter's Moor, which is part of the town moor, located pretty much adjacent to Spill Tongs. The exact location of this is sort of hard to decipher, but I reckon it to be sort of near where the Dame Allen Junior School is now to this day. And from this point, coal would have been extracted out of the ground and loaded into sort of the subterranean tunnel. And because of the sort of steep sloping landscape down to the River Tyne, the tunnel was built a gradient, which meant once the coal was loaded in, it would sort of roll down the wagonway using its own weight, meaning there's no need to sort of provide any sort of power to get the coal to the bottom. And this would save this all this coal having to be transported through the centre of Newcastle, which at the time was about to undergo sort of a radical redevelopment with Granger Town and sort of the Georgian New Town built on top of the sort of city plateau. This coal wouldn't have to travel through any of this sort of land, it could travel swiftly under all this new development and all this uh, growing city without putting any sort of restrictions on it or slowing it down and dealing with sort of the medieval street layout which mainly still existed at the time. So then the route sort of runs adjacent to North Terrace and the Central Motorway where it runs um, up towards Cowgate Roundabout. So the route of the tunnel here is sort of deciphered to be a long sort of route of North Terrace and somewhere in, underneath this and visually above there's not anything really telling you uh, that the Victoria Tunnel is running there or any sense of way. And it's this location um, between Ellison Place and Queen Victoria Road where the uh, RVI hospital is based is where part of this was actually converted into a sewer. From here you run past the entrance to Exhibition Park and a number of sort of the university's sort of biological and medicine buildings. Currently the engineering building at Newcastle University is undergoing sort of a, a radical um, redevelopment and this is where sort of the cranes located here. And this area where sort of university buildings such as Mertz Court, Claremont Bridge and the Daesh buildings located is quite an interesting area of the city as this was all constructed around the time the Central Motorway East Bypass was built and this sort of shows the ideals of the time of sort of Claremont Bridge stretching across the road and um, sort of the streets and the sky aspect is really visible here. So Claremont Bridge has just undergone a renovation about two or three years ago um, it's on the gra lower ground levels, it's had sort of a, a bit of a refurb and a bit of modernisation. From here you run past the um, uh, Great North Museum and this is the location of one of the entrances which are still visible to the Victoria Tunnel. I believe you, there are some tours which actually enter from this entrance but I also believe this to be one of the air raid shelter entrances as well. From here you enter into sort of Haymarket and the green around St Thomas's Church. This is an interesting area of the city because um, obviously you have a large number of civic and university buildings all fronting onto sort of 
St Thomas's Church. Obviously notable sites are the new, hey, well, the rebuilt Haymarket metro station, which uh, was nominated for the Carbuncle Cup when it was actually constructed. And this is basically a an award cup that used to run for um, the ugliest buildings of that year. In St Thomas's Churchyard, this is where one of the entrances to the air raid shelter was. And um, obviously during the Second World War, people would use this entrance to get in and out of the uh, Victoria Tunnel. An interesting rumour of this sort of part of the tunnel is that obviously when the Civic Centre was built, this was done in sort of lavish um, construction and really no expense was spared on the construction of this. So there's always been a sort of a rumour that the Civic Centre has an actual entrance or an access into the Victoria Tunnel at some point. Now whether this is more than just a rumour and actually is the case, I'm not actually sure of. But I quite like the sort of fascination of the Civic Centre having this sort of emergency escape route into the Victoria Tunnel. From here the tunnel is sort of deciphered to run through Northumbria University campus. Uh, its exact whereabouts through this location is not really sort of known. So the route I took was just cutting through the campus and heading towards the Northumbria University Bridge across the Central Motorway. So here we cross the Central Motorway heading towards um, Newbridge Street. The sort of whereabouts of the tunnel was uh, taken from a Chronicle article which listed four or five key points where the tunnel was known to run and then taking these points and sort of creating a walking route between them. So here now I'm heading towards New Bridge Street, uh, past the sort of university buildings, and you get to Shieldfield Green. So Shieldfield Green is one of the um, largest bits of open space and close to the city centre on the sort of eastern side of the city. Before the 1960s, this was a nice green with sort of old houses built around the, I believe, 1600s, 1700s, all spaced around Shieldfield Green. The Christ Church uh, Church is located here and would have overlooked the green at the same time. And this is actually the only remaining building from this time that remained. And the houses around here would have were developed as sort of merchant houses or sort of high quality houses just outside of the city centre. And this lasted for a period of time until until Manor's Railway Depot was built. And Manor's Railway Depot is where the Northumbria University School of Art and Design and Business is located now. So this went from the sort of merchant house has been located in a sort of a verdant part of the city into these houses being located next to a railway depot which at the time was steam, smoke and sort of the waste of the railway really eroded the quality of these. And then in the 1960s Shieldfield was whole scale redeveloped and obviously the tower blocks you see today were now uh, put in. From here you, we cut through around the back of Christchurch Primary School past some of the sort of Northumbria University accommodation and around the, these are around the back of uh, the New Bridge Street sort of villas which was some of the first sort of suburban houses built on this uh, section outside of the city. From here you go past the old uh, bathing club and St Dominic's Priory and Catholic Church. The tunnel is expected to run sort of beneath these buildings and then from here we start getting towards the sort of the entrance to the Usburn. So from here the tunnel is expected to run under St Anne's Close and these are the sort of modernist blocks of flats again demonstrating that sort of skywalks and streets in the sky aspect with sort of a, a, a centralised access point and from there you sort of have walkways that interconnect and take you around the development and these blocks are sort of all set around sort of playgrounds, areas of sort of green space It's actually a really well done scheme. There's nice sort of flats um, spread out in a, a, like a parkland almost. Again, there's no sort of visual uh, remnants of the tunnel running beneath us now. So you can imagine when this was in use, a large amounts of coal would be running completely under this whole sort of transect of the city we've just gone through. And if this had to go through the street on sort of horse and car or a wagon's way through the streets, 
you can imagine the amount of disruption that would have been caused from this all going through. Main entrance to the tunnel today, if you want to do a tour, is actually located in the Usburn Valley. The entrance is close to the Toffee Factory and the Hotel Devon. From here, obviously this uh, current entrance that's used wasn't actually the final destination for this. It would have ran all the way to the river. Apparently when the new Glasshouse Bridge, which is the is the city road bridge that travels across the Time Bars, Beer Garden, was built, the lower end of the tunnel was um, removed uh, for this part of the construction. The tunnel would have continued running on to the mouth of the River Usburn and joined the River Tyne and there would have been some sort of wooden staiths here to load the, these wagons on. Once the wagons had sort of reached the um, wound up by a steam engine or a traction engine which had pulled all the carts back up throughout the city centre again completely unnoticed. It really shows the sort of the lengths that were taken to sort of transport coal throughout the city. Mm -hmm.